name is Alessandra Collar Littman. I'm from Plymouth, Michigan, and I'm a member of the Plymouth Artist Collective as well as the Huron River Art Collective in Ann Arbor. And I primarily am a mixed media artist. Um, I work from imagery that I find in vintage photographs, um, things that to me tell a story, um, give uh, life to a person or a friendship, and um, personally inspire me. Um, so here's an example of one of my earlier pieces that I did. This is all fabric. I take um, mainly batik fabrics and I use them in a painterly way. I start with my image that would be a small vintage photograph and um, I enlarge it to the size I want to make it and then I use that as a template to create shapes that I transfer onto um, a backing surface, either a board or a canvas, um, with an iron-on interfacing. So I can actually cut out a shape, fuse it directly to the background, and create a surface that I can then draw on with colored pencil to emphasize details or to hide and obscure the fact that I have fabric, cut fabric edges. Um, this one I call Curly Girl, and I just fell in love with her face. Uh, uh, the interesting thing for me about this, this was sort of more of an exercise in how I could uh, manipulate the, the fabric and take it to a more painterly place. So um, all of her hair, for example, this is, these are individually cut pieces of fabric. And then um, by using the colored pencil on the fabric and actually drawing, uh, sort of um, blurring the edges, so to speak, with the, the strands of hair coming out, it ended up um, looking like hair like a painted hair, uh, head of hair rather than um, cut pieces of fabric. I did um, draw the face um, freehand with the colored pencil. So the nice thing about fabric as a substrate is you can, um, with the weave of the fabric, you can get this very nice soft um, uh, nostalgic feel to it. And I think that that translates well when I'm working from the vintage images. So this is Curly Girl. Um, these collection of pieces over here are um, images that I found of uh, children. These are from the 40s. This one's from the 20s. I think she's from the 30s. Um, just uh, interactions with uh, friends. Um, this one I call Good Humor with the popsicles, um, children eating popsicles during the summer. Um, here's an example of where I've taken the children are all fabric with that fused um, fabric going to the surface of the board and then I painted the background. So really truly combining uh, media um, to create a mixed media image. Um, this one is um, all pieced fabric that I've been um, drawn on with colored pencil and uh, again all of the faces are um, completely freehand drawing and um, she is I call her the girl in the grass and um, the Huron River Art Collective when they were still the Ann Arbor Artists or Ann Arbor Women Artists Collective um, just before the pandemic did a juried show and I entered her and she won third place in the 2020 juried show with the Ann Arbor Women's Artists Collective. These pieces here um, are my most recent pieces. And um, this one is a woman and her daughters. And I loved the composition. I think one of the things that attracted me to using found photography as my inspiration point is these kind of images were taken by, um, you know, just everyday people, not professional photographers. And so um, oftentimes you'll, you'll happen upon a composition that really just elevates it and um, really calls out to be turned into art. So um, this one I just thought with the um, classic, you know, um, three point composition was especially nice. And uh, I love the serenity on her face. So for me, the joy of the work that I do is bringing these people to life. Probably all of these people are gone now and this gives them an opportunity to have a second life and to, you know, connect with the viewer. Um, this piece, I named this one Mabel Courage, and she's named Mabel Courage because that was the uh, caption that was written on the photograph when I found the photograph. And I just thought, 
her directness and her strength of character and that calm look on her face really made me uh, believe that she had courage and, and so that was the perfect title for the piece. Um, this one, uh, it might be hard to see on the video, but um, the background is all mostly raw batik um, without any kind of um, drawing on it whatsoever. The batik has such a, um, a painterly quality to it. So what I did on the background on this one is I added some leaves to give the impression of leaves and then right in the background you can see um, peeking through the leaves uh, a brick wall. So it gives um, the illusion of more work um, and that's what I, I enjoy working with batik. It's sort of my go-to for um, finding segments of it that really look painterly. So this piece, I call it the three graces. Um, when I first saw the photograph that this is based on, um, the composition reminded me immediately of the classical sculpture, the three graces. They were the daughters of Zeus, and um, they represented uh, beauty, uh, youth, and mirth, or joy. 
And it occurred to me that each of these women, she represents elegance or beauty, she represents youth, and she represents joy or mirth. The, the look on her face was like she had a little bit of a quirky smile going on. Um, two things about this image. One, I loved the way that they were interacting and um, how they represented so clearly to me those qualities of the, the three graces. Um, what if the three graces could age and they would still retain those qualities even though they were old women? Um, also, women tend to become invisible as we get older. And so this, to me, was a way to represent those kind of ideas um, while still having a composition that if you didn't know any of that behind the scenes thought process, they would still speak to you because they remind me of grandparents and um, people in my life that have meant so much and their, their youth and their beauty had nothing to do with it. Their wisdom and their um, personality were still embodied in who they were even, even when they became old. Um, and this is all fabric. This is very, very pieced together with many different um, fabrics in here. And so you have to look really close to see, but I didn't even try to butt the uh, uh, pieces together because they were so uh, you know, viney and everything. So this really is a layered piece more than I usually work. These three images are a different process. These are collages. Um, I end up with so much ephemera, so many photographs that I'm not going to use for the larger pieces. Um, I collect, you know, stuff from uh, flea markets and old letters and things with stamps on them. And um, this is a way to use those materials and still create those um, uh, mixed media images, but just on a smaller scale. Um, for example, um, this I call two in a canoe. And it started out with this photograph of these two women from the 20s in this uh, canoe or rowboat. And then um, I have other sections of letters, postcards, uh, things that you might not see that are hidden. I end up painting over it to tie the piece together and to make it a unified piece. Um, this piece is called Triangle Lake. And um, I've got uh, pieces from postcards. This was from a photograph. There's letters in here. I think there's a stamped thing somewhere in there. There's some old writing in the clouds from a letter. And then uh, use paint to tie it all together and to try to tell a story also um, with what's going on in this, this world. Um, this piece is called Misty with Love. And this is, I think, my favorite collage that I've done recently. The title comes from, this is a postcard and the um, the inscription on it says, I'm thinking of you as uh, we are misty with love. Just the, the, the feeling of um, missing somebody with the ships. And then this was a photograph of two Victorian ladies with their skirts up going into the surf, which I've never seen. Um, so it just really kind of came together um, very, very quickly. And again, I use acrylic paint to tie all of the disparate pieces together. Um, this piece, I call this the last day of summer. And um, it was based on a photograph that I found of this amazing low shot of this woman uh, in a park setting and um, uh, spent an awful lot of time working on the light hitting the skirt just so um, and giving her a mood because she wasn't looking at the camera. This isn't a portrait of somebody that you can um, see their face, but you can definitely see her personality and the person who took the photograph. You're the viewer that took the photograph when you're looking at this. And to me, um, this image is almost classic in its composition.
So I titled her Muse, and um, this woman started out as a very small, about one inch tall, photo booth image of a woman from the 30s. And um, what I, really struck me about her was not just her beauty, she had the most beautiful face, but how she was looking directly out with this calm confidence at um, the camera. And what sprang to mind immediately when I saw her was I wanted to make her iconic. I wanted to elevate this woman to the status of like a deity, how a deity would be represented in art or, um, you know, a relic of some sort. Um, and so I turned her into, I, I didn't want to, I ended up not wanting to make her a specific deity. So I just call her Muse. Um, because honestly, when I was working on her in the um, studio, I felt like her eyes kept looking at me and she kept kind of coming to life. And it's the kind of moment as an artist that you hope for, where your art actually takes on a life of its own. Um, her uh, garment and her hair are both in this beautiful batik with this sort of organic um, <coughs> floral shape to it. And then her face is one piece of fabric I started with a very deep purple uh, piece of batik and I hand drew her face so that it kind of emerged from the fabric and then um, I tried a different background that I wasn't happy with and I decided to go with this metallic gold which reminds me again of how um, you'll see you know religious figures from the medieval period will have this this um, gold or gold leaf background and I just feel that she has such power and um, very, very pleased with how this one came out. So this is called Phil and Shirley, and Phil and Shirley was a commission that I did for a friend of mine who actually is from the Berkeley Huntington Woods area. Uh, Phil and Shirley were her grandparents, and they owned a fabric store in Royal Oak. So um, this is a very local piece to this library. And um, this is an example of a piece that I did as a commission, which um, is I think part of the, the joy of working with photographs, is taking a person's memory of somebody and bringing them back to life. And um, so Phil and Shirley, this is a picture, I believe, of their engagement photo um, set in a park setting. And um, they uh, actually had the fabric that's edging this piece is from their fabric store. So um, uh, my friend has this in her living room with other elements of curtains and things that belong to her grandparents. And it just ties it in with creating a memory that, that springs to life. And um, so many of us have those letters and photographs and, and you know ephemera from our families that are just in a box. And I feel like um, working as an artist, this is a way that I can bring those out into the light and make them um, a part of you know, what you can enjoy uh, on a daily basis. So um, this is an example of a commission, uh, one example of a commission that I've done that I think um, does that job. So this is a collection of my smaller collages, and um, what I want to talk about specifically is this one, 
Um, I call this one the mirror of the world. And this actually, um, the story about this is the moment I was made to realize what it was that I was making when I do a piece. Um, I was feeling a little bit unsure of how, I mean, making these little dinky collages and you know how important or unimportant they would be. And a very good friend of mine who's an amazing um, landscape painter, his name is Kit Gentry, um, was over for a visit. Now I've known Kit since we were in college together at U of M. And um, his work is at the level of like a Vermeer, just incredible. And um, I hesitated to show him some of the work I had been doing. And I brought this one out and uh, I also showed him this one. This one is um, an image of a woman in a boat looking back at another boat with the moon over top of them. I showed him these two images and I asked him to give me his thoughts. And he looked at them and he said, you know, whenever I see images of boats on the water, or people traveling on water, I always think of life and afterlife. And all of a sudden it hit me. I've been making these images for a while and I just go with what I like. I go with what I'm attracted to and I think that's the point of being an artist. But I had been so missing the people in my life that I've lost. And suddenly I realized all the pieces that I'm doing that have old letters in them and stamps and handwriting and images of people all have to do with communicating and what it means to connect. Um, and suddenly it occurred to me, I made Mirror of the World, which is the top part of it is a scene from a postcard of sailboats. But the bottom part, when you turn it over, is a street scene from another postcard. And that became the surface of the water. And I had this ticket in my box of ephemera for a long time. It says Mirror of the World, and I really wanted to use it. I realized that me missing my grandparents and the people that had passed, if I think about it philosophically, they're right on the other side of whatever this is. And so my, my spiritual connection with my artwork, it's like the light bulb went on. That I've been subconsciously making these images that reference that subject matter. And all of a sudden I had no more embarrassment about what I do and it meant everything to me. So I've now looked purposefully for those kind of images and I and I just really enjoy making these little collages that have that kind of impact.